Hello, welcome to Skull RPG Podcast. My name is Dwight Skull. My name is Jacob Skull. And today we're going to teach you how to tell, tell your, your story. story. So Dwight, since we've been talking for the last couple episodes on different RPG systems and a couple one-offs to run when, you just need something quick. Since we have this wonderful thing called COVID and there's this indeterminate amount of time before we can go back to what is considered normal life, we should probably talk about how can you do this in a virtual sense if you're not comfortable or not able to meet quite yet yeah in person so i mean and even before we had done i'd done virtual stuff over uh google video chat because one of our guys uh he needed to be home by a certain time so he can watch his kids so his wife could go to work and base basically we just did it um because there's just no time there was no way that we can make that time work so we just did it virtually and it worked out really well um the tip on this is it depends on what kind of game you're going to do. So that game was a GURPS game. And we talked about GURPS in an episode called GURPS. It's yep. the generic... All of them that we've talked about minus D&D are easier to do over. Oh, 100% easier. So the nice thing with that is, um, just so you're aware, what I did is I said all the dice rolls I want beforehand, before we even begin, and I just took them all. And then what I did is I just made a spreadsheet. I did even my dice rolls. I did out. I rolled all of them as well. And so I had a list of like 300 dice rolls, and they had a list of 100 dice rolls a piece. I figured I'd have to roll more as the GM than yep. they would. And then you just started randomly at the list and went down, so it was ran randomized. So I just started end. at like 67, let's say. I just picked one. So it wasn't like if I knew if I rolled like two ones and a, and a 20 or whatever right at the gate, right at the gate, let's say. Um, then I kind of knew what to expect. No, you didn't. I was going to start somewhere on the list. And when I ran out of numbers, I would just go to the beginning of the list and count through. And only once did I have to have them roll me like another set of like 20 numbers because we were just using it. That really went well for a lot of good um, storytelling because I could just tell them what would happen. Then they even pushed back and said, can we do battles with actual numbers, please? I, I'm like, that's fine. But all the non-combat stuff, we just did that way. So that was helpful. Um, and no offense, some people are like, well, how do you know they weren't lying to you? Look, if you need to lie to me um, over a weird tabletop RPG game, we're not doing the same thing, right? The goal here is to tell a good story, not for you to beat me up as a GM or to beat every monster I throw at you. Because to be fair, if that's what the player wants, fine. Throw a level 20 monster on a level 5 character and see what happens. Like... I mean, there's a Tarrasque in the uh, Dungeon Master's man Monster Manual. It's a level 20. There's one per world. You can literally have it come up and eat the entire character party if that's really what they want to play. Because at the end of the day, the Game Master can always win against a player. Um, because the Game Master can literally just have a god show up. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, look, the entire Greek pantheon of avatars just decided to show up and kill you. Why? Because I'm the GM. That's why. That's not how we're playing the game. We're playing something different. So to play... There's a level of trust you need to play games over um, some sort of remote idea. That said, D&D doesn't work out well for it because of all the stuff we talked about in the D&D episode. You need a map. You need to know where what five-foot square everybody's in. You need to know, is my fireball able to get seven of those eight guys or eight of those eight guys or four of those eight guys? How far apart are they? And D&D doesn't really work well, which, and this is why there are tons of software programs to do D&D online because they require there, those yep, minis. Which there are virtual maps that you can use, like actual like map code softwares, create your own maps and use them online and have exactly. your characters interact. The problem with those is... They're such a hard thing to learn. Time sink in order to learn, and then you're having to hand put them in, so it's not as... At the beginning Easy. of this, we thought about it, and I looked at one of the software packages that was on Steam. I downloaded the demo. I spent six hours in the in the tutorials, and I went, no, I'm not even close to hitting the, the learning curve for this. This is ridiculously hard. Yeah. And I realized that I I would have to, and I wasn't even DMing at the time. I realized that was six, six hours for me just to be a player in it. It was nuts. So... Fine, but Shadowrun, GURPS, Vampire Masquerade, any of the World of Darkness slash uh, White Wolf games, um, Knights Black Agents, or anything from Pelgrane Press, uh, Ten Candles, everybody, everybody's John. Everybody's all of these John's perfect. All these games can be played over uh, Skype or Zoom or WebEx or Google Chat or pick your chat here. Um, the only thing is you just have to have some ground rules on how dice rolling is going to happen 
And so let's just cover that really quick. You can do what I did. Everybody dice rolls for the non-important stuff before the game and you get it all. If you're playing with four or five characters, that's impossible to manage. I wouldn't suggest that I was playing with two players. One other way you can do it is you just tell them, I need you to be honest. I'm going to start looking really askew at you if you start telling me, oh yeah, 18, yep, 19, yep, 18, yep, 16. Like, okay, really? You're not rolling bad at all? Like, come on. Um, You know, and maybe they aren't, well, like, but... It, it very well could be that, like, they have a rogue that has, like, plus 12 and everything. So even sure. when they do roll, it's pretty high. Yeah, that could be... That's... that's. But I would know that. You would know. Yeah, the rogue's I mean, going to rarely botch this. And if he does, he's going to make his reflex. Yeah. And I'm going to tell me, oh, it bot. Oh, man, right. my reflex. But if I'm used to you rolling 27s and I keep here, and now you're rolling a 16, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But if I'm hearing the same number over and over and over again, I'm like, is this the... Like, is this Dilbert's random number generator in hell that just kept saying eight over and over and over again? I mean, it's it's the thing of, like, no, something's got to give. So you got to have some level of trust for your players. The other games work really well with it because you don't have a mat. You don't typically use miniatures, right? You just are narrating the entire game. They're narrating their portion of it, and you're going back and forth. So D&D, in some ways, it made it really easy for everybody to learn, made it really hard to do any kind of remote setting for it. Yes. So if you're kind of dying on the vine after it's been, I don't know, I mean, we started locking down in my state in March, um, and they haven't, in my county, haven't really come out in a lot of ways. Like, we've been able to meet in face-to-face as long as all of us are wearing masks around a table and stuff. Um, just to be totally legal. And also some of us work in healthcare. Uh, so, you know, it, at the end of the day, it, it was fine and we were able to meet for a while, but now we're back to the county is in a lockdown state saying no more than two people from outside your home in your home. And there's like six of us that play. So that's not possible. So we've gone to online board games and such, and I'll post some links to those on our um, resources page, skullrpg.com slash resources. And uh, there you can find at least some online games you can play for free um, that work really well, if you already know the rules, that is. Um, otherwise, everybody, everybody's John is a great game. Because as long as the video is working, they literally can just open up their palm and you can just count, like, or even ask, how many pennies is that? Oh, that's six. Oh, okay, well, you won. Please put them into a different pile. How many do you have now? I have three left. Okay, great. I, or, or that one's even a nice one for if, if you have that trust thing because they say, I'm betting five pennies. Everybody tells you what they're going to be betting at that time. They can all chat it. Yeah. the same, like, put your, put your number in the chat. Everybody hit enter. Now. Yep. And then, now mm-hmm. it's this thing of you tell him the thing. He's like, oh, I'm going to go drop a penny here. And then you note, well, he spent five here, and he just dropped. So now he has four pennies left. Yep. And then he lost control, so he has five pennies now. Exactly. It's easy for you as a GM to keep track if of it with Johnny. Virtual if needed. Ten Candles is an easy one, because you could literally just have the... You could share your screen and have the app of the Ten Candles burning. Um, and that's fine. That's easy to do. Uh, the, the other games are really easy to do via that too because they lend themselves to that. As long as you're, as long as you can figure out the roll, the, the rolling the dice, that's nice. the hard part. Um, and so, and again, that rolling dice doesn't really work well to like move a camera, especially if they're using a laptop camera and not like a, a you third could, party you camera. You could also have them share their screen and have them do like a random, like the several programs that do a, do the random rolls. No. I know you don't like that, but no. that is also another option. Sure, I guess if you're lame, you can use the computer-generated rolling and totally let the computer take it out of your control. So. There, there are apps that physically roll a die. It's not no, just a don't. random number. No, they do not physically roll like, a die. Virtually on the screen, it rolls a die. That's just so, not telling you that it's an eight. That's that's a that's a lie. <laughs> That's such a lie. You watch the D8 roll around and show you that it's an A. There's, I guarantee you, because I, I work with software programmers and have done programming myself, that is a GIF that they use that does its little thing. A little, and, and then they have a random number generator rolling the numbers. There's no way. Behind, what, what's behind no. the image is besides no. the point. Yeah. Anyway, regardless, <laughs> don't trust yourself to some crazy random number generator. But if you want to, and your entire party is good with it, I will let you do that. I just come from the old school of don't touch my dice and I will roll my own dice. Thank you very much. Um, which is why we've even offered before 
the concept of, oh, you need to do secret rolling. Make me roll my secret rolls before the, the adventure begins for that night. Because I want to roll my own dice, not you roll it for me. Because I don't trust you to roll my own dice. Mm -hmm. Now, I trust you to tell me what the result was. I just don't trust you to roll my dice for me. So, anyway, all that to say, D&D horribly, sadly, doesn't really work well in a, in a virtual setting. I know you all know that by now. But all the other games we've covered, the Shadowruns, the GURPS, the Vampire, the Mages, the Night's Black any, Agents, all really work well without any, it. Any uh, RPG system that doesn't require mats. Yep. So a Warhammer and a Battletech's harder You're to done. do. Yeah. But anything else that doesn't require a mat in miniatures is perfect if you're talking about stuff in five foot squares you already know what the, you already know that you're done you can't do this virtually or really. 10 foot squares or 50 foot squares yeah. if you have a foot square marker none of the other games i've talked about literally talk about much of anything in that regard they just like yeah the gun can shoot it's fine there's not even a range it's just like make up your mind can the gun shoot him or not you can know? a pistol hit beyond three miles that's probably up, not that's up to you like, if the answer is yes, then I guess it does. If the answer is no, then I guess it does. I mean, you're the game master, so... It's your game. It's your game. Do what you need to do with it. But anyway, so back to... Um, in this regard, you can choose a ton of other games. Uh, and if you want some board games that you can do for free in a remote setting, go to skullrpg.com slash resources, and I will give you a list, uh, a link to one site that we've been using quite a bit for some free board games. And I'm not talking about Milton Bradley stuff. I'm talking about real board games. So thank you, guys. Hey, thanks for listening. And for more resources, please go to SkullRPG.com.